Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video game about musical mayhem, a book about following God, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing, Crystal Parker! Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> Crystal is the owner of Intent and Impact Consulting Company and the president of the Central Florida Christian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for having me on your show today, Tiberius. Well, you're welcome. What? Today we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be some awesome mayhem. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Music Mayhem. This game is not on Roblox, but it is on a game platform from Epic Games, and it's called Core. Oh, and guess what? Core is free! So I get into the game and select play. You have to go through the big portal, and then you have to pick a song and then play it on your keyboard with DFJK, or YUIO, or the arrow keys. I feel really good playing this. I mean, because it's a rhythm game. So I'm really good. Kind of like Dance Dance Revolution and FNF. And the cool part about this game is that you can earn combo points. Oh yeah! Combo points! Woo! Also, it is multiplayer, so that means you can play with your friends. You can play with 10 people at the same time and see their screens. That was neat. I don't even have 10 friends! Uh. Uh. Well, I give using Mayhem 8 out of 10 stars because it's a lot of fun to start a song and then to get a full combo on the song and then beat my friends. Also, it was fun to get my dad to try and know that I finally found a game that I could win easily against him. <laughs> the Tiberius Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Airboat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an airboat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the your family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. And now it's time for the book of the week. I am Josiah. This book is written by GW Tolley. Let me read you the back of the book. In fact, Crystal, would you like to do the honors? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> I am Josiah is a story of a hard-working, middle-class family that's doing everything they can to keep food on the table and light and the water on. Three family members are in a runaway car going down a steep mountain. It almost takes their lives. Overwhelmingly cha overwhelming challenges and events led to a lifetime of anger, hurt, bitterness, drinking, heartache, and just about removed what faith they had left. Only God can change a heart and restore faith, hope, joy, love, peace, and purpose, Tiberius. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not an AR book, so you don't get any points for reading it. Well, you might know G.W. Tolley. He was on my radio show. He talked about his TV show and work with publishing books. Well, this is one of the books that he had published himself. Well, but what is this book about? Well, it's a lot about GW's life as a kid and his experiences with God. In this book, GW talks about a near-death experience with his family in the car and the brakes were not working and then God saved them. He also talked about when he lost his hearing and he prayed to God to help him and now he's able to hear again. He also talks about when he was bullied so much that he thought about killing himself. God saved him and he forgave his bully. He, she, he even talks about his dog, Sacha, and how God saved her life when she was very sick. I liked learning that Josiah means God has healed, which is why he says that he is Josiah, and so can you. 
I also like that he spent time working with hearing awareness. I don't know what I would do if I could not hear my mom and dad again. I give I Am Josiah 8 out of 10 stars because it was a cool way to learn all about his life and how he always asked God to help him through his problems. Thanks, GW, for sending me this book. It's an awesome book. And actually, I loved it so much, I wrote the foreword in that book. Oh, yeah, I see it. That's right. Right here. Crystal Very powerful. Powder. Nice. And now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Crystal Parker. <laughs> Crystal is the owner of Intent and Impact Consulting Company and the president of Central Florida Christian Chamber of Commerce. And we're actually launching the United States Christian Chamber of Commerce also. Nice. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I'm, I'm having the time of my life, Tiberius. Sweet. Okay, so your title is the president of Central Florida Christian Chamber of Commerce. So what does that mean? Basically, it just means that I'm the one that's in charge. I'm the one that people call when they're not happy, and I'm the one that people call when they want to say, great job. <laughs> nice. Well, how long have you been doing this? I've been the president now for about 15 months. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it means a year and three months. Very good. Wow. Quick month. <laughs> so what was the reason that you decided that this was the job for you? My background is in business, so I led a Fortune 199 oil and gas company Ooh. on the west side of Texas. 47 cities was running the gas company. So I love business. I was really good at business. I tell people business is my sport. And I love the Lord. And so I had a great opportunity, and God led me this way to be able to work with businesses and be able to share my faith and help Christian business leaders be successful. Well, nice, but does it take a lot of formal training to be able to run a Christian Chamber of Commerce? It just takes a lot of experience and a willingness okay. uh, to be able to be the president. Nice. Well, what is the difference from a Christian Chamber and just another Chamber of Commerce? Ooh, that's a very good question. The difference, the primary difference is that what unites us is that we all believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so we are Christians in business. And sometimes when you're a Christian in business, Tiberius, it means taking a narrow path, doing things that are more true to your values and your ethics instead of what the rest of the world does. Sometimes like if you're bidding a project or you're working in a deal, uh, maybe your competition might take shortcuts, do something that's not right. As a Christian in business, we believe that we have an opportunity to share Christ by doing the right thing. And I know you've heard this before, but if you do good things, good things happen. But if you do bad things, bad things happen. And what we want to do is we want to reinforce Christ values in the workplace and help people be successful tapping nice. into that. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the best part about working at the chamber? The people, by far. Our members are amazing. Yes, thank you. You're amazing. And Thanks. when you get around amazing people, great things can good. happen. And you feel good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So what have you learned about yourself doing this job? That I am not equipped to do what I do. <laughs> every single day I learn something new and I'm growing every day single day and I don't think that you ever get to a place where you just say I'm I'm awesome I'm so great uh, every single day I learn and I get better so I've just learned that I I don't have all the answers but God does and I know who has the answers mm -hmm. yeah God. yeah now you hold events and raise awareness about the Central Florida Christian Chamber why is it important to tell lots of people about it well, it, when you own your own business, and I know your dad owns a business, and you're a business owner also, it's lonely. Even though you're surrounded by people, it's very lonely. To, success comes at a price, oh, and you yeah. know that. You see it. You're in here working on your show, typing scripts while your friends are out at the playground hanging oh, out or playing video games or yeah. doing that. Well, it's lonely at the top. And as Christians in business, we want to tell everybody that they can come find their tribe, come play with us, come be a part of a community because you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the hardest part about running a Christian Chamber of Commerce? 
The hardest part about it is the fact that we want to tell everybody about it and not everybody knows about us. Mm -hmm. So it's really getting the word out and sharing with people what we do. So that, I'm so thankful to you, Tiberius, for having me on the show because it gets an opportunity to share the Christian Chamber and what we're doing to launch the U.S. Chamber with more people. And the more people that can hear about us, the more people want to be involved. Yeah, at least you might have 150,000 more people. Woo! What? Wow. Yes, sir. Well, what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your job? The craziest thing that's ever happened while I was doing my job. Wow. There's been a lot of crazy things in my job. I think the some of the craziest things are when things don't go according to plan. Oh, yeah. You know this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you think you have everything planned out. But then you don't. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, somebody breaks out into like, you know, dance like, and hey, song. Hey, what about our stuff? Exactly. And so, you know, I think the a lot of times we plan and plan and plan and try to make things how we want them to be. But we've got to learn to give space for God and the Holy Spirit to come in and have His way in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you could think of one thing that would make your job easier, what would it be? Well, I would love to have you on my team, Tiberius. Sweet. Yeah, I need someone to come have fun with. <laughs> <laughs> now you're about to say you have another job, and that is that is your own business called Intent and Impact. Can you tell me more about that? Yep, I absolutely can. So when I left corporate America, I started my own consulting company, and I help businesses be successful. And I just wrote a book called The Best Robot Wins, which I wanted to make sure you had a copy of that. And what I do is I help businesses succeed through a 20-point predictive system so they can look under the hood, just like all these computers and things you like. Oh, yeah. You know how you were showing me the 3D printer earlier? There's all kinds of little components for that to work. Well, businesses are the same way. And so what I like to do... These tiny little components, and if you don't have those, then it might not work. And one little thing, being out of balance, can do what? Break the whole Break thing. Them. And that's what it is in a business. So I like to help businesses. Well, which job is more fun? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. You're really inquisitive. <laughs> I have fun in both of my jobs i think the biggest thing is you never work a day in your life if you love what you do mm. and so when i'm in my sweet spot working with the christian chamber businesses or working with businesses through my company i'm doing what i love and so it doesn't even feel like work mm, nice well what is the best part about running your own consulting company the best part about being a business owner as hard as it is and as many hours as you work and you know this mm -hmm. is saying yes to the job or no to a job. It's every day my success depends on my ability to show up. And that's the best thing about it. It's the scariest. I've heard it this way. You eat what you kill. So meaning if I don't go out and work, then I'm not gonna eat. Sure. And I love that. I love that if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So I work every day like it's up to me, Tiberius, but I pray every day like it's up to God because ultimately it is. it is. So I can build my success so far, but when I lean into what God has for my life, then it goes supernaturally. Mm -hmm. Wait, how many people did you say watch the show? Uh, 150,000. 150,000 kind of blessings. Uh, just like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, how does consulting work? Consulting works by building a relationship. So you can't just walk into somebody's business that all different sectors. Like imagine if I came into your show oh, and yeah. I said, oh, Tiberius, I think you'd do better if you did it this, this, and this, this way. Oh. And then I go over to a manufacturing company and say, oh, it would be better if you did this, this, and this. What you do is you go and you got to learn what the business is. The and people that are working in there, they know the answers. So what I'm trying to do is help them be their very best that they can be in their job and help their business be successful by tapping into their knowledge. That's really what consulting is. Mm. It's tapping into what you do best and helping you really grow that. Mm, nice. Well, why do companies need a consultant? Because a lot of times, okay, let me ask. Okay, here's a perfect example. So if we both look at our microphones like this, right? Well, really close, get really close to your microphone and just stare right at it. All you can see is the microphone. 
-hmm. right? Well, sometimes we're so close to the problems or inside the business that we can't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. So having somebody help you kind of step away and look at things different can really help companies and individuals be successful. So I think that's really why they need a consultant to come in is to give them a new perspective. People pay for that perspective. Yes, and also when you're like getting very close into the mic and you're like really staring at it, instead of seeing the whole big picture, you're seeing double the problem. You look <laughs> oh, you're you wise. Double. Yes. Like double the problem. Yes. No big picture. Correct. Yeah. And when you focus on problems, what do you see? Exactly. Problems. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Is it a problem? It's problems. Problems. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, what is the one project that you worked on that you were most proud of? The one that I was most proud of was my very first consulting job, actually. Uh, this guy hired me to come in to help him with his board. And so I wrote a board workshop and I helped him. And the outcome was so great from this project that he broke down in tears. He was so moved and he was so thankful and it changed his life, it changed the company. And that was the most proud that I was and it wasn't anything that I did. I just helped him, helped him out. be successful with what he knew in his heart he needed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what was the first job that you ever had? Ooh, I was hoping you weren't gonna ask me that so that when you got to the point where you said, did I not ask you anything? Then I could have said, you didn't ask me what my first job was. Oh. Okay, well, here's my first job. You ready for this? Yeah. I was a pig farmer. Ooh. So have you ever heard of 4-H before? No. 4-H is like, uh, it's like a bunch of people from a small town. My small town was 300 people. 300 people in my town. And 4-H was an organization that we did. So we'd raise like stuff in the garden and then we'd take it to the fair. Have you ever been to a fair? Yeah. Okay, so at this fair, one of the things that I would do is I take my pigs. I get two pigs every summer and raise the pigs, and then I take them to the fair, and then they get in this big pen, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you understand, but like a pig that's kind of been in a cage, when they get in a big pen, it is a crazy thing. They, they just start zoom. Yes, yes. And so I'm like walking behind with my little whip, right? And my pig's the one running around going crazy, and it's embarrassing. Um, but that was my first job, and I started when I was seven, and all the way through when I graduated high school. So I wow. bought my first car, I'd buy my school clothes, and it really wow. taught me a lot about managing money. Yeah, yeah, that was my first wow. job. Well, was there anything you learned from that job that helped you be a better president of the chamber? Absolutely, because it was all about helping pigs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, because it was really about managing business, really managing money, managing business, and the work ethic. You can't leave a pig out there to be hungry. You True. have to go out and feed it. Back and to being feed. In a feed, right? And then what do we do as Christians? We feed our souls, we right? Feed our yeah, souls, yeah. yeah. Well, who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? I would say, and I wrote about this in my book, um, I wrote the, uh, the a thank you to my mom. She was the hardest worker I knew, and I watched her, just like you watch your dad, right? Mm -hmm. He's a hard worker. And so when our parents can be that first model of what it's supposed to look like, it really can make a huge difference. And so watching my mom made a difference for me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. me watching my dad made a difference. Absolutely. Well, what advice would you give my listeners if they wanted to grow up and were on a Christian Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're looking for you. So if you want to if you want to run a Christian Chamber of Commerce, then I'd love to talk with you because we are looking to grow these all over. And I would say the biggest advice that I would have for you is really follow your heart. God made you unique and you're perfectly and wonderfully made. And so be yourself and, and God will lead you that path. Nice. Well, what is your next event that you are going to have with the Central Florida Christian Chamber of Commerce? We have a couple, two events, ne three, three events next week. Okay. So on Wednesday, we've got our president circle. And on Thursday, we have our annual meeting and lunch with all of our members. And, and then on it's like once a year. Right, that's once a year, yeah. And then on Friday, so I've got a few things to prepare for. Friday, we have Fellowship Friday. Yeah. So we've got, we, we got a hot week next week. So if you had to do a different job from the ones that you are already doing, what would it be? A different job than the ones that I'm already doing. I think that I would 
I'm living my every dream. So I think that I would just continue to grow it and duplicate it so that we can reach and touch more people. Nice. Yeah. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? I would say to myself, love yourself where you are. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're not going to get it right always. It's a process. So just keep showing up, Crystal, and don't give up. And don't beat yourself up either. Hmm. Well, what was the biggest mistake you ever made? And how did it change you as a person? Well, I actually quit something once. And the one thing you can't change is if you, if you quit, right? True. So I quit my senior year. I was running track. And Ooh. on my in my junior year, I went to state as a runner for the half mile. Awesome. Half mile is two times around the track, and it's like oh, a yeah. sprint. It's hard. It's really hard. But I went to state, and I was the youngest one. And so Ooh. my senior year, I kind of disagreed with the coach a little bit. And I scratched myself out of an event he wanted me in. And so he scratched me out of the event that I wanted in, and I said, I quit. And so I'll never know, Tiberius, if I would have been a state award-winning half-miler. Oh. And I would have had, like, my name up on the post office or something at my little yeah, town. Yeah, my friend Annabella from school would have made the half-mile. Right? Because she's, like, really fast. She okay. can run, like, a mile in, like, five minutes. See? It's super crazy. Imagine if she quit. She Imagine. would never know. Yeah. Yeah. And she just wakes up early in the morning and starts going for a run. Oh, she works hard. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're not working, what do you do for fun? I love to play tennis. Yeah. My teacher, um, Miss Allen from Enrichment, loves to play tennis. Really? Maybe I could play. Maybe I do play her. I play I'll competitive. Uh, uh, well, I think our team is A2, so we're up there. Hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah, she just said her rank was like A plus plus. Oh, she so would. She. Yeah. I'm totally walking shame right now. She would beat me. I'd like to play her. What's her name? Uh, Miss Allen. Miss Allen, I'm calling so, you out. Please. Let's go play. <laughs> So, do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favorite one? Well, I don't play video oh. games. However, the game that you just showed me um, on here, the one that you just uh -huh. did, I would love to play that one. That one's awesome. I love music so oh. much. What's your favorite? Uh, I have a lot of different favorite games. Okay. I'm not really different. <laughs> so, okay. So, what was your favorite book to read? My favorite book to read, and, and this is just being truthful, is the the bible i really believe that the bible is the most relevant book oh, yeah. out there and i'm not just saying that because my daughter told me when i started as the president in the christian chamber all of her friends think i'm the ultimate christian oh wow <laughs> what is that what is that oh, but wow. i'm not saying that to be like the ultimate christian i really do believe that the bible is like really relevant it's yeah. the best business book ever written it's the best book on life so that's my oh, favorite yeah. yeah okay okay now can you tell me that one story you know, remember, this is a kid's show. So not inappropriate stuff. <laughs> but that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can tell me. <laughs> you know. Okay, so here's a fact. Now I'm gonna tell you this, okay? And then I'm totally telling on your dad too, I bet. So this is true, and I hope that my daughter's not listening or watching. The very things that I get her in trouble for, I've probably done most of them in my life. <laughs> like one time, Tiberius, I went to the grocery store and there was a, a mom with two kids and they were, they were really bad. And they were like hitting each other and they were like deviling each other. Like you don't know anything about that, right? Okay. And so, and so anyway, and so, and so listen, so the kids are hitting and then all of a sudden I watch the mom and the mom is like, don't hit each other. And she's like hitting the children. And then I started thinking to myself, like, the exact like, opposite. like how many times have I washed out my daughter's mouth with soap when in reality, my, my mouth should like be foaming with soap. Right. So, so I get her in trouble for things that I probably done yeah. yeah so there you have it well is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you I can't think of anything else that they should know other than the fact that we're launching the United States Christian Chamber of Commerce. And Thanks. if there is somebody that is listening that wants to get a, be a part of that, i really love for them to look us up. Well, do you have a Facebook for my listeners that want to be part of the Christian Chamber of Commerce? Yes, it's, it's Central Space, Florida Space Christian Chamber of Commerce. Sweet. 
Well, what was that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? I know, you can't ask the walls of your throat. I thought that's what it was gonna be. So I, you know, can I ask you? Sure. All right, what has been your best moment doing these shows? Best moment? It was probably when uh, we had such a fun time. Um, yeah, because we were basically listening on Alexa because we just got picked up on Amazon Music. Ooh. And that's part of my Alexa. So when we went ahead and uh, when we searched up uh, GW, GW Tolly's show, it said EP 158 gigawatts Tolly. Because my dad put GW. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why does it say that? <laughs> and I was like, oh wait, GW does stand for gigawatts. That is so great. Oh, and that's I'm the like, best. Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Crystal, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Oh, I'd love to. Yes. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners. Well, thank you, Crystal, for helping me with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about common fractions to memorize. You heard me. You remember how you memorize the times tables. Well, you can memorize some fractions to make some problems become easy. So which one should we memorize? Well, one of the most common ones is one over two, which is 0.5 or 50%. Then you have one over four, which is 0.25 or 25%. Then you have three over four, which is 0.75 or 75%. Those are used a lot and are easy to convert into decimals. But then you have one over five, which is 0.2 or 20%. And four, four over five, which is 0.8. And if you can remember that, then you will know that two over five is 0.4 and three over five is 0.6. These are the most common used fractions in math problems. Now if you want to go a step further, you can learn one eighth which is 1.25 and seven over eight, which is 0.875. Learning all the eighths fractions really makes doing the conversions easy, which will make doing fractions into decimals much faster and easier. No wonder why I was doing so good in math class. <laughs> so Crystal, do you know all most common fractions and know why it might be useful to memorize them? Absolutely, even in chamber memberships. I could totally use this. It's nice. Well, thank you so much, Crystal, for your help with math corners. Mid-State Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Mid-State Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. And now it's time for the heart of a lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're gonna talk about integrity. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. The qualities of integrity is honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and fairness. 
Okay, so I am like most kids, and well, we don't like going to bed, do we? Wink. But this week, I worried hard to remember when my bedtime was and to go to bed at the correct time. Then I do my reading for 30 minutes in bed, and then I go to sleep. This week, my dad told me that my show is picked up by Amazon Music, and I told my Alexa to play the next episode of the Tiberius Show and fell asleep listening to it. I literally flipped the whole bed around just so I can listen to it. It was fun. <laughs> so, Crystal, did you see or use integrity at all this week? I saw a lack of integrity this week. Uh, yes. Over Halloween. Do you know how people leave their candy out sometimes and yeah. they go out trick-or-treating? Oh, yeah. People who just raid them. People raided raid. them. And guess what? One of those people that raided, I knew who it was. Oh. And Tiberius, it was caught on camera. Yeah. It wasn't me, but I know who it was. And it went all over the neighborhood. Yeah. And so the thing that you said about doing the right thing when nobody's watching That's is so important. Yeah, it is. Like I saw a, a thing where they had a thing out and they said, take one if you would like. Take two if you dare. <laughs> I take two. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't pick the bowl up I and dump it in your... Up. Yeah, and then run away and get caught on camera. Exactly. So integrity can be from trick-or-treating or in business when you're charging a customer. Or just, sleeping. Or sleeping. Or doing what your mom and dad said. Mm -hmm. Like one time I went to the store and I noticed the price was lower than what I thought. And I said, did you charge me for both of these things? And she goes, oh, thank you so much. I didn't. Now, sure, I would have liked to walk out with half the price, but, but it wasn't the right, thing, wasn't to the right thing to do. And when you live your life like that, then good things will happen. Of all of the heart of the lion virtues, which is your favorite, Crystal? I'm going to go with integrity. I think Sweet. you're you're spot on with that. Nice. Well, we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do, shouldn't we, Crystal? We absolutely should. Yeah, that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Crystal Parker for being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today, and I hope in the future that I will be able to visit your office and see you in action. Ooh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yes. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show, and please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boy. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Rune manager, Danny Boy. And your program host, Tiberius Boy! The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.